Hello, today we're going to read, share this story, Make Way for Ducklings. My name is Minister Carolyn Gray, and I'm hoping that you will enjoy this story as much as my children did and my grandchildren did. So here we go, Make Way for Ducklings. This family of ducks are looking for a home and they, you will see them in the country, you will see them in the city, you will see them on the water, you'll see them on the land, and they will make a home and they will interact with people. And it's a very interesting story. So here we go. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live. But every time Mr. Mallet saw what looked like a nice place, Mrs. Mallet said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water. And she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on, if you can see them flying. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden, which with a little island right here, the island on it, the very place to spend the night, quacked Mr. Mallet. So down they flapped to try and get over here to the island to spend the night. The next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond, but they didn't find much, but here they are in the pond looking for breakfast and there's a lot going on here there are people in the park and the people are reading the paper and the children are playing and they are looking also at Mr. and Mrs. Mallet so just as they were getting ready to start on their way a strange enormous bird came by it was pushing a boat full of people. You can see the boat. Full of people. And there was a man sitting on its back, on the back of the swan here. It is called a swan boat. Good morning, quack Mr. Mallet, being polite. And the big bird, was too proud to answer, but the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water. So the mallets followed them all round the pond and got another breakfast, which was better than the first. Better than the first. Now, here we are in the park, in the Boston Garden, and they are really enjoying themselves. There they are, the two ducklings. And I like this place, said Mrs. Mallet, as they climbed out of the water and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes and no turtles and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs. Mallard had found a place that suited her. But out 
came a racing bicycle. Look out, squeaked Mrs. Mallard. She was very upset at this point. You'll get, you'll get run over, she said. And then she got her breath and added, this is no place for babies with all those horrid things rushing about. We'll have to look for someplace else. Those horrid things is the bicycle that the little boy came racing by on and missed them, but very close. It was a very close call. Now, so they flew over Beacon Hill and around the state house, but there was no place there. This is a city of Boston and this is a state house right here. So we have lots of tall buildings and we have cars coming and there's a lot of activity now, more than what they're used to. And on they are, we're still in the city. The ducks are flying overhead and they looked in Lewisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. So the land was good, the park was beautiful, but there was no water. But look, there is water now. There is water and there's an island and there's a bridge. Then they flew over the Charles River. And that's what we see here with the bridge. This is better, quacked Mr. Mallet. That island looks like a nice quiet place and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Mrs. Mallet, remembering the peanuts. <laughs> that looks just like the right place to hatch ducklings. There they are, about to decide to stop off here. Beautiful spot. So they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. And only just in time, for now they were beginning to molt. All their old wing feathers started to drop out and they would not be able to fly until the next ones grew in, but the next feathers would grow in. And although right now they may not be able to fly, but they can swim. So they can swim. And one day they swam over to the park on the river bank. And there they met a policeman. And he was, his name was Michael. Michael fed them peanuts. And after that, the mallets called on Michael every day. They went to the, where the policeman was every single day so they could get peanuts. After Mrs. Mallet had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go to visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs to make sure that they were all there. And there she is sitting on the nest where the eggs are. And Mr. Mallet, he's right over here. He's watching to make sure everything is okay. And I did do a little research today and I found out that it takes about 28 days for, for ducks of this kind that we're talking about to put the eggs to hatch, about 28 days. Okay, so here we are. One day, the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Cack, and then Lack, then Mac, 
and neck and uek and pack and quack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallet were bursting with pride and with happiness, but they also realized that it was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings and it kept them very busy. I wish this were a little more smooth. So here are the duck and the ducklings, all the little ducklings right there on the island. And there is a father duck over here. And one day, Mr. Mallet decided that he would like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like. So off he set, he went. I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he quacked over his shoulder. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, said Mrs. Mallet. I know all about bringing up children. So he, the dad is going off up the river to see what else is up there. And the mom is over here on the side of the bank with the, with the eight ducklings, the children, the eight children that they have. And now they're having lessons. They're having to learn things like all children. All children have to learn. So there's a mom duck and there's the children all around her. And she taught them how to swim and how to dive. So you see some of them are swimming and some of them are diving under the water. And there they all are. There are the ducklings and there is the mom. She taught them to walk in a line to come when they were called and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels on them. Remember, they had gotten frightened a couple of times before with, with bicycles. And now, here she is, and they're practicing the mom and then the babies in a straight line following her. That's what she's taught them. And when at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, come along children, follow me. Before you could wink an eyelash, Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Uwak, Pack, and Quack fell into line just as they had been taught. And Mrs. Mallet led the way into the water and they swam beyond her to the opposite side. So there they go down the street. Here they go down the street now in a straight line, the mother duck and then the babies, the children following in her. But here's a situation now in that they're downtown in the city where there are cars and high buildings and and more activity. There they waded ashore and wallowed, wallowed along till they came to the highway. And all sorts of stuff is going on on the highway, cars with noise that they'd never heard that much of before and the movement. Mrs. Mallet stepped out to cross the road Hunk, hunk, went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack, went Mrs. Mallet as she tumbled back again. Quack, 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 went Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Pack, Quack, just as loud as their little quackers could quack. The cars kept speeding by and hunking and Mrs. Mallet and the ducklings kept right 
on quack, quack, quack one. Now, with all of this activity going on, we there's another person being introduced now. And again, they made such a noise that Michael ran way, way waving his arm and blowing his whistle. Now, Michael, the one they had met before, he's a policeman and he could see that they were in danger. So here he is, he comes running, he has a whistle and he's blowing the whistle and the cars are hucking their horns because Mrs. Mallet and the, and the babies, are, well, their children, trying to cross the road and the police is helping them to do that. And in addition to doing that, he planted himself in the center of the road, Michael did. In the center of the road, raised one hand to stop the traffic and then beckoned with the other the way policemen do for Mrs. Mallet to cross over. So Michael, the policeman is standing there. He's got one hand up to stop the traffic and then he's beckoning Mrs. Mallet to come with the children to cross the road so they can get across safely. So now that that's done, as soon as Mrs. Mallet and the Declans were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed back to his police booth. And then when he went back there for a reason, and that reason is that he called up the, another policeman at the police headquarters and told him, there's a family of ducks walking down the street. Clancy said, family of what? Ducks, yelled Michael. Send a police car over quickly. So just before they cross the street again, they have another policeman, two policemen now, to make sure that they are safe this time. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallet had reached the center bookstore, right on the corner here. There's a corner bookstore and turned onto Charles Street with Jack, Knack, Lack, Mac, Ack, Pack, and Quack, all marching in a straight line behind her. Hey, there they are. And there's some people on the sidewalk now. So there's a lady standing there from Beacon Hill. And she said, isn't that amazing when she saw the ducks? And there was a man who was sweeping the street. And he said, that is just so nice, he said. And when Mrs. Mallet heard them, she was so proud and she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle because she was so proud that the kids were obeying her, doing what she had taught them to do and got compliments from the people on the street on how nice they were. The lady and the man, and then there's a car on the other side, but they are safe. Okay, so when they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was a police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and the Ducklings could march across the street. So you see the four policemen, they're holding their hands up to stop the traffic. And 
Mrs. Mallet and the and the ducklings right over here. They are crossing over the street. So we have lots of activity here. We have cars all over the place and high buildings and the ducklings, they're going to safety. Okay, now. So now they're out, out of the city and they're safe again, thanks to the police, Michael and Clancy. Right on until the public garden is where they went to. The park, the park in Boston, the public garden. And they're safe in a beautiful environment. And there they are, down the bottom here. Okay, we're getting to close to the end. So now they're inside the park. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policeman. The police smiled and waved goodbye. So the ducklings appreciate the, uh, and Mrs. Duckling, the mom, appreciate the police helping them. So when they're on the other side, really safely and far away, and the, they see the police and they're waving to say thank you. We appreciate you keeping us safe. When they reach the pond, when they reach the pond and swam across to the little island, there was Mr. Mallet waiting for them just as he had promised. And at this point, I'm sort of wondering if anybody remembers how long uh, Mr. Mallet said that he would meet them. <laughs> he said he would meet them in a week and that's what he did. And he was there. And he, here's what it looks like in the island is right over here. And Mr. Mr. Mallet, he's right here. And here is Mrs. Mallet and the ducklings going to meet me here. So here we are. The ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there. All day long, they followed the swan boats and they ate peanuts, the swan boat with the swan and the man driving the swan boat. And that came along, I don't know, maybe two or three times a day. And there are people there riding down the river. And so, and there are people uh, alongside there and they're throwing peanuts into the water for the ducklings. Everybody is sort of enjoying each other here. This is a big book and it's a little clumsy. But I, the illustrations are so beautiful that I couldn't not get the bigger one. And when night falls, they swim. And when night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. The little island is right over there. And they have a very busy time and a very active life. And and so we are. A way was made for the ducklings and everything turned out happy. And it was a wonderful, wonderful story with the ducklings now going up right over here to meet with the dad and to, and to sleep. They're tired now, take a little nap. And that is make way for ducklings. And I appreciate, I, I appreciate um, you listening. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.